I'm Kyron Harrell, Vice President of my local chapter. Today, Bryce and I will be uncovering the positive impacts of good sleep health here in the Christ Hospital of Cincinnati, Ohio. We will be meeting with Mr. Michael Zipate, one of the sleep specialists here at Christ, who will hopefully give us some insight on how we can achieve good sleep and how, with proper steps, we can dream bigger. Hi, I'm Bryce Bodai. Mike C. Nice to meet you. How you doing? Kyron Harrell. Hi, Kyron. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Thank you very much for meeting with us. Okay, now we can begin. How much sleep should the average high schooler or middle schooler get? Well, it does vary uh, from individual to individual, but most people of that age would require about eight to 10 hours of sleep in order to get that full restorative quality of sleep. How are sleep and performances in school correlated? Well, sleep, uh, one of the aspects or benefits of sleep is to consolidate memory and to restore physiological uh, functioning, uh, growth hormone, that sort of thing. The next question is, why is sleep so important to the growing person? Well, during sleep, uh, particularly stage three or deep sleep, uh, growth hormone is secreted. So this is what enables children to undergo those tremendous growth spurts. It's what helps cell regeneration. It's what helps our muscles recover from um, sports activities, things like that. So what are some good before bed routines to help you get the best sleep possible? Well, uh, there's quite a few what we call sleep hygiene tips. Uh, routines immediately before bed, anything you can do to establish triggers for yourself. Stimulus response. So you presented with something like turning the lights out, uh, turning the covers down, uh, brushing the teeth, anything that you do routinely every night. You want to go to bed at the same time and get up at the same time every night or within about an hour, ideally. Now, I know we all can't do that, but try to stick to its regular schedule as you can because we each have a biological clock. It's what we call the circadian rhythm. And it's what helps set a number of hormonal changes, physiological changes within us, including sleep and wake. So you want to keep that the same. Exercise is something great that uh, everybody can do, but not too close to bedtime. Exercise is a great sleep aid. So to get good and tired, but you don't want to be stimulated, so you don't want to uh, exercise within about two or three hours of bedtime. What age groups need the most sleep and why? Oh, well, children need the most sleep uh, because they're growing. It's that growth hormone that I mentioned earlier that's secreted during sleep. And so that helps uh, children grow. Uh, sleep uh, in newborns is probably about 17 hours a day. And as we age, that decreases until it stabilizes uh, in adulthood to about seven to nine hours of sleep. It's really what's needed for, for most people. There are individual variances, but right. for most people, it's seven to nine hours a night. I believe that that concludes it. I want to say thank you very much for letting us come out to the beautiful facility that you have here. And just thank you for the answering the questions for us. Glad to do it. You guys were great. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you, sir. After our meeting with Mr. Stepate, we learned three gold mines for better sleep. One. Have nightly routines that tells your brain it's time to relax. Two, make sure you live a healthy lifestyle. You need rest just like your muscles. And three, all the benefits that we can reap like removing stress in everyday life.